Next up, our keynote speaker. Uh, we've got Alan Way, the CEO of L Bank. And the topic that he's going to be talking about is the new age of digital asset platforms. Who will finally win the race? Can I please have on stage CEO of Alan Way from L Bank? But uh, finally, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you, Alan, for uh, uh, this conversation. So Alan is the co-founder of L Bank. And I would let Alan give a brief introduction about Hellbank quickly, please. Yeah. So uh, my name is Alan, Alan Wei, CEO and the co-founder of uh, Bank Exchange. Uh, Bank Exchange is a crypto exchange we are founded in 2015 and launched in 2016. In fact, we are already running this exchange for seven years. This is the seventh year, and now we already get the seven million registered users, and we have 200 staff global. So uh, in this, in the last seven years, before we are mostly in Asia, but start from last year we start to go in global, and I'm also come here uh, Dubai to start our uh, first step to set our global team, and so this is uh, some brief tradition about our bank. So I think most people will know know us. Wonderful, Alan. That's wonderful, and uh, so the topic here today really is we are trying to understand. There, there are so many crypto exchanges coming in, and who will really win the race? And just for the benefit of our audience, uh, probably there are a lot of pros and a lot of newbies out here. Uh, I would quickly say what crypto exchanges are really, but in a way, crypto exchange is a business that makes it possible for users to buy or trade one digital asset to another asset. So if, for example, if you've got Bitcoins with you, and you would want to trade and give away your Bitcoin and take liquidity in other crypto assets, it's all possible through crypto exchanges. Uh, to build the crypto industry, as such, crypto exchanges have played a very, very important role. Today, the market is almost, it's actually not almost, but over $1.8 trillion today. And all thanks to the exchanges who are working in this space. And there are over 500 crypto exchanges today, Alan. Uh, actually, this is a question that I'm often asked, um, that what's the difference between a tier one and a tier two crypto exchanges, and why do we have tiers actually in the crypto exchange business? Okay. Uh, everyone knows now there's a lot of exchange uh, in the world, uh, and uh, a lot of exchange, there are different. Every, I think every exchange have the unique if they get users. Why you choose this exchange? This is the question. And we, we can see like a lot of exchange, some are fa focused on like local market. Some are doing uh, like global market, like LBAM exchange, where like one stop exchange doing the global international market. And what we can offer some unique to our users. So this is uh, the question I also always keep asking myself to do what we can be special in this industry. Uh, as the data in our bank, we already have like 7 million registered users. And in the last, especially in the last year, we get a lot of very good groups from different countries. Now our users already cover 200 countries and regions. So especially in like uh, Minai, in India, in Turkey, in uh, Africa, we get very good groups in those regions. So why they choose us? This is also the question. Uh, yes, actually, like, because, you know, there are so many crypto exchanges, and as a user, you know, I'm confused which crypto exchange to go for. Actually, yeah. that takes me to also a related question. Why should somebody use L Bank and not the top one or top two? Okay, uh, I really want to answer this question. Like, in L Bank, we have a very strong research team, and we are keep looking for good and new potential projects. So we offer more choice for our users. Especially like yesterday, we have Indian users. They come from India, and they meet me in our booth 93. And he is the real user to come from India. He just want to come here to meet us. He said, told me Alban played an important role for him because he can find good new potential project to invest in. And he really earned money from this. He even want to make this as his main business to uh, for his life. So this is like, we offer more new chances for our users and we try to be a better, better service to our users. And what is so special like if uh, there is a, 
a race towards who will win in terms of listings, for example. So what special is L Bank doing in order to bring interesting projects to the community? So in, is it the research part of the business or the speed at which you communicate with your project or it's a personalized communication that you provide in order to make the project feel that this is the right place for them to list? Uh, okay. Well, uh, it's not only about research and listing projects because this is only the most simple part. Uh, the search and the listing new good potential project, this is the first step. And the next step, once we get this kind of good project to offer to our investors, we also need to be very responsible for our investor for our users also be responsible for those projects we are cooperating in so we also bring community to those projects we do a lot of co-marketing with those uh, projects like what we are doing now uh, especially in, in this year we hired more and more people more and more community manager country manager to join us in fact in this year my target is to double our team in the global market, so that we, we want more, hire more talent guys to join us, to do the local community, to bring the good project to the community, to also support the community. So uh, we do a lot of things like conducting to the project, to grow together. This is very important, win-win way. Absolutely, Alan, and somebody like me who is very well informed with what's happening in the crypto industry, and I'm very closely linked also with El Bank, uh, I see that there is a lot of initiatives that's being taken in the metaverse side. So, and you know, that's the most hyped subject, you know, starting from 2021, everybody, even people who don't know about cryptos, everybody's buying an Oculus and stuff, and they're saying, hey, we want to be a part of metaverse. I want to buy land in metaverse. I want to buy taxes in metaverse. So what is Elbank doing on the metaverse side to make it convenient for users? to get into this business. And maybe you can give a bit of uh, a background about Metaverse. Uh, would be great for our audience, I suppose. Okay. Uh, Metaverse is really very crazy in the last years, and it will keep more crazy in this year, I think. Uh, this is very good new chance for us, especially for our users. Uh, in our bank exchange site, we keep listing good Metaverse project to offer these tools to our users. And in another side, we're also trying to explore more in Metaverse uh, industry, like uh, we registered our uh, VC funds, L Bank Labs in DIFC here in Dubai, and uh, we already invested in some very good Metaverse, uh, Metaverse uh, project. So they, uh, we are also looking forward to invest in this kind of project to find uh, uh, more good projects to offer to our users. So basically what you're saying is if there is an interesting metaverse project, not just are you looking at uh, listing them on El Bank, but the team is also looking at investments and guidance so yes. that they can get to the next steps and they start basically their journey with El Bank. Yes. Great. And how important is community? Because uh, as I just mentioned earlier, there are over 500 crypto exchanges in the world today. Uh, everybody is trying to be unique, but don't you think it's the community actually, it's the community of an exchange that decides who is good and who is bad. I mean, I, I shouldn't say bad, but really who should be the top notch and who should be 584th crypto exchange. So what's the role of community in building a crypto exchange? Okay. Uh, I think community is not only for crypto exchange, it's for every project. It's the most important thing for every project. If you want to build your project, you need to build your community. You need to build your product and build your community. Uh, like uh, what our bank is doing, like uh, for now, we are trying to strong, we already get a lot of good user space, user data, and we are trying to strong our community. For now, we are uh, in, I think even just in this month, we get four new community managers to join us. So this, like every month, we are trying to find more experienced and talented guys to join us for the community work, to do the community groups and community service, to offer the best chance for our community users, to build the community connection. Especially like in community side, we want to go more deep to different countries and regions. We want to go more local 
in, in fact, our target is not go international. For now, we, our target is going to more and more local in different countries and regions. Like for, uh, uh, I think in this month and next month, we, our community manager already do a lot of like events, meet up. Every month I will see in our social media, if you check, you will see our bank's community meet up. Like in India, in Turkey, in Morocco, in Nigeria, in all those countries we are now look like look, looking for, and our users is very active in those regions. So this is very important for us. No, it is, Alan, indeed. And also uh, the important point here is probably that's also your plan for 2022. Uh, other than Africa and Indian subcontinent, are you looking at other markets as well for a deeper connection with the community? Uh, you mean our plan for re region? Your vision for the uh, not just region, but other countries, should we be seeing or are we going to see more countries adding to L Bank's list? Are you looking at physical offices other than Dubai and China? Uh, Philippines also, I suppose, L Bank has an office. So yes. what's the plan for the Western part or Africa, for example? Okay. Uh, in fact, we have, uh, like the region you said about like Africa, India, Philippines, Southeast Asia, all of the, this region, already we already have team there. Uh, and very good quality guys in there to do their community work for us and do a lot of promotion for L Bank. They speak for L Bank uh, and trader in L Bank. Uh, and in some, uh, in this year, we in fact we already have like office in some some of the region like Philippines. Our we have a lot of customer service teams based in Philippines, and they they only service very good to our users like. And how would Dubai be actually? Because that's one part of the world. But how about something like Dubai wherein you have access to all over the world? Like you can work in literally all time zones, right? Yes. Dubai is the best place for crypto and blockchain. Um, I, I have to say this. Uh, it's very open here and very safe city. And especially, uh, I, I already been here Dubai eight months. And now I'm resident here. I live here. Uh, I have house here. It's very happy life here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really the witness to find out that Dubai become more and more popular about blockchain and crypto. I, I saw a lot of projects come here and a lot of crypto people come here. And the regulation in Dubai is also become better and better because uh, recently the Sheikh Mohammed they announced the new law to uh, regulate the cryptocurrencies and NFT, NFTs. So this is very good news for us. In Dubai, in fact, we are doing a lot of things like, firstly, the regulation is good news for us. That's why I set the compliance team here in Dubai to meet the regulation. Regulated. Yeah, to meet, to meet the regulation. And we want to be regulated here. So uh, they are doing the work. I think in this year we will have some good news to be announced. So this is one thing we are doing. Another thing we're doing here in Dubai, uh, it's a very good city to be like investments. So uh, besides the person, po personal investment in Dubai, we also like to reject our VC funds, our bank labs in DIFC to invest in project. So we, we are trying to do a lot of things in Dubai, yeah. Absolutely, that's great to hear, but Alan, also what's your opinion of, on global regulations? Uh, we saw FTX, Binance announcing their licensing in the region. Uh, are there other regions as well which are good for cryptos? And a related question to this also is, are regulations good or bad? I know you did answer that regulations are good, but does it also mean that the crypto industry will see not the growth that they saw last year, for example, two exchanges declared profits of over a billion dollars. Are we gonna see this trend to continue in 2022 and 2023? What's your opinion on, in general, global regulations? It means the global regulation, right? Uh, I think for when it comes to the global, it's very complicated. Uh, different countries have different uh, rules. But in the most region and country, we will see it's good and a new trending. And the people and the government, they are, try, they are trying to understand and adopt uh, the new laws for cryptos. So uh, like in India, 
they accept the tax for cryptos. So this is also a good news. At least this is, it means this is legal first. And then we try to talk about the details, how to make it running better, how to make the benefit in the both sides, the regulation side and the community side. So I think it will take step by step. So uh, we are also keep studying this. And in this year, L Bank, we will also have some very good news about regulation sites. That's very good. So we talked about community, we talked about projects, we talked about regulations, we talked about physical office in different parts of the world, what L Bank is trying to do. And how about safety? Because, Alan, every year, uh, you know, as per one of the reports from Chain Analysis, the, uh, the, the majority of the frauds are actually also happening through crypto exchanges. And what's L Bank's policy, or how is it like the L Bank's users are so safe and secure? Uh, is there a secret sauce that you can share? Uh, I know not not the whole details, but maybe what's so special about L Bank in terms of safety and security of users' crypto assets? Because they are trusting the exchange. When I'm a newbie and I'm trying to open an account, I would just go to the top two exchanges and I would say, hey, let me open an account, even though they have been hacked in the past. I mean, one of the major exchanges were hacked in 2019 for 7,700 BTCs, but still it's the goodwill, it's the media that you believe and you go back and uh, set up your accounts. Um, what's about L Bank? Okay, I think you asked a question. Everyone of the US are who concerned about uh, in the safety. In, yeah, in exchange industry, uh, a lot of hacker, a lot of hacker, and in the, even in the last year we have some news. We know some news that some exchange being hacked and lost a lot of assets. In fact, that's all users' assets. So this is uh, everyone concerned this question. And for our bank, I don't want to say how complicated, uh, how complete we have the system we are, but I want to show you the data in the last seven years. In the last seven years, we are running good, and we have seven million registered users now, and we have a lot of good user dates from different regions and countries, but we never lost any users' assets. We have been, I know uh, a lot of hackers uh, attached us. In fact, my email is open for everyone. I so always you get were, some... You mean L Bank was targeted by hackers? There's always hackers come. My email, uh, always receive some email from hackers team. They will threaten you and tell you something, but next, we never have lost any assets of our users. So you can check the news. Our bank is always keep safe and never lose user assets. In fact, my background is like developer. I am start with Java developer coding and then product manager. All that this deserves the uh, risk control uh, system details. I all involved to design this part. This is very, I think, concern. This part very good. Wonderful. So when we have our assets lying on L Bank, we are secure. We are safe. We can sleep peacefully. And next morning, when I open my L Bank account, I have got my assets intact. That's good to know. <laughs> and um, what do you see is going to happen in the next, next five years? Like there is so many things coming up. What do you think uh, the future of crypto exchanges is going to be? Um, out of 584 precisely what we have today, are we going to see 500 more or are we going to see only 100 crypto exchanges in the world? What, what do you see is going to happen in the next five years? Uh, okay, five years I think is already very long for crypto industry because in, the, in this industry everything changed very fast, very fast. If we look, uh, we look back to the five years ago, uh, what, ha uh, uh, what five years ago crypto industry looked like. Uh, when that time I'm still doing uh, L Bank exchange. So five years ago, I also look for, uh, checked a lot, I still remember many, many white paper of the projects. But in five years ago, that's all imagination. Nothing can be achieved. It's all imagination. But for now, in nowadays we see a lot of things happen. DeFi, GameFi, and smart contract application, any a lot kind of uh, uh, communication, even uh, DEX, even DEX. So this 
Before, it's all only in white paper, and nothing happened. But five years later now, everything happened. This is because of the tech. The technology improved in these five years, and it's very great growth. It's very big in improvement. If so, the same things. Just, let's just see what happened in the five years later. I think the first thing is like everything will be changed based on the tech improvement. This is the basic of everything. And then uh, let's see. Uh, let's also think about what will happen in these five years. I think the first is the most easiest to be helping in the next five years is the information gap will be reduced. The information gap still still there in crypto industry. Like there is some model already very success in some region, but in the other region it's still not start or just start. So this will be like copy from one region to another to another region. This is already helping in inter internet industry. So in internet industry before we always say copy to China, copy from China. So the information gap, like uh, in these years, the, uh, why in these years we're looking for a lot of like game fine project to India? Because we think that that still have some like information gap. The game fine project before is very popular in Southeast Asia, very popular in Latin. It's, it's also starting in India, but not popular like that. But, so there is like some information gap. This will be reduced. So we can copy this model to another region. This is the first thing will be happened. The, the next thing I think will be happened, uh, that's thing about like, uh, with the improve of our technology, of blockchain technology. I think more and more like traditional industry combined to connect to blockchain application, it will be helpful and it will make new trends, make some new popular things. Let's just think like game by, also game by project. This is combined by game and blockchain, game and NFT. So this bring a new industry, in fact. It's a totally new innovation. So is it, can we say further development towards metaverse, like you know time travel, space travel, teleportation, you know, these are the things when we, we used to read while we were growing up, we were watching Star Trek, and okay. looks like all of this will become a reality pretty soon, the way things are building up. Uh, time travel is still too long for me. <laughs> uh, but in Metaverse, in Met I think a lot of things will be happening. Before there is a movie, very famous movie, uh, Top One Game, uh, I think, uh, I forgot the name. Uh, it usually shows the version of Metaverse. I think now with the technology developing it, uh, this will be coming in the next five years. In the next five years, of course, Metaverse will become one of the trainers. It's already the trainers. It's just become to achieve more and more. Uh, like maybe this kind of event, we don't need to join anymore. We just yeah, we'll meet just in Metaverse. And everyone, we can fail each other feel each other, saw each other, and connect to each other. So this is very amazing. This is very amazing. But this still needs very good, more advanced our technology. Yeah. Absolutely. And probably, um, I don't know how much time do we have. Do we have more time or? Two minutes? OK. Um, actually, you know, we can also, uh, if audience has any important, any interesting question for Alan, uh, I'm sure he would love to answer. Any questions from anybody? No questions. Uh, Alan, maybe uh, last point, uh, and I'm always curious to know more about DeFi, the way decentralized finance started to grow in 2020, later 2020, and now we are in 2022. Is there an area where you see that we'll see a lot of progress from traditional banks, traditional financial institutions coming into blockchain, combining technology, and therefore offering DeFi products? Do you think that is something that can happen? Uh, for now, DeFi already have a lot of like application, and I think with more user occasion, user case to join this, we will develop, there will be more application, and it's also with the Web3 and with uh, like uh, for now we have more strong blockchain uh, protocol to come in. I think more and more user case will be supports. So this is keep helping. This is what keep happening, and it cannot stop. 
this is totally cannot stop. Great, Alan. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, your thoughts, your feedback, your opinions were all very, very interesting. And I really enjoyed interacting with you, and especially the vision that you have for the crypto industry, and especially for L Bank. What L Bank is trying to achieve is something very unique because you're not just trying to list projects, but you want to be their friends and also want to give them trading volumes. And at the same time, you're taking care of the community. And uh, thanks to you, and uh, wish you all the very best. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.